Welcome TLC family. Well, it's Marriage and Family Month at TLC Avenel, and we've been talking about parenting this week. On Sunday, we hit on five keys to raising successful children. Um, earlier this week, we were talking about raising fierce women of God and just some tips about raising girls. Um, and today, I want to focus on boys. If you are a parent or a grandparent to a boy, um, you know, we're going to talk about raising strong men of God today um, because God has such a special plan and a special role for our boys and I feel like there's been a lot of harmful um, ideas um, put on boys over the years things like um, you know men don't show their shouldn't show their emotions or you know men aren't good communicators or men are dumb or men are not as good parents as women and you know I am all for equal rights between men and women you know um, feminism I don't have a problem with that but when it comes to the point where we are disrespecting men the men that God has placed in our life I feel that we've gone too far right that God has um, called us to honor the men in our lives and uh, and really encourage the strength in them encourage like foster that confidence um, that they need to really stand up and fulfill the plan of God for their life and so you know our boys I feel like they're getting these mixed messages a lot in the media and it's our job to set the record straight and mold them into the men of God that they're called to be. And so the first thing that I wanna talk about today is the value of verbal affirmation for our boys. Um, you know, if you're raising boys, sometimes, you know, there can be a discomfort, when, especially when they start to get a little bit older, like maybe you don't want to be too, you know, mushy gooey with your emotions for them or you know tell them I love you all the time but verbal affirmation is very important um, for our boys for I would say children in general um, but I think sometimes we shy away from saying it to our boys things like I love you um, I'm proud of you you know I'm here for you no matter what um, you know those kinds of things and really put it, placing a value on um, really you know being free with our emotions with them and and really making them feel secure in our love you know I love that this is something that the Father God did for Jesus like he modeled this for us in Matthew 3 17 so this is when Jesus had come to be baptized right he came to the Jordan River John the Baptist baptized Jesus and then it says here in Matthew 3 17 and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Father God was so proud of his son Jesus that he just couldn't hold back. He's like, I just have to tell you all, I'm really pleased with my son, right? I'm really proud of him right now. And uh, and he's mine, guys. He's my son, you know. <laughs> and as a parent, we can feel that way a lot of the times, right? You know, our, our child does something that, you know, maybe we've been working with them on for a while and we're proud of their progress. Don't be afraid to say that. Hey, son, you know what? I'm really proud of the way you handled that situation. Or I was really impressed when, you know, you spoke to so-and-so about this issue or how you handled this other issue over here, right? Don't be afraid to verbally affirm your boys because this builds confidence in them and makes them secure in your love. Number two, I'm going to say, teach honor by example and um, I want to go to Ephesians 6 1 because there's some instructions you know as Paul is teaching here in Ephesians 6 on family matters right and he's giving instructions to husbands and wives he gives instructions to children here too in Ephesians 6 1 and he says children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth 
And fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. And so you can see here that honor is tied to long life. Paul is saying, hey, children, honor your parents, honor your father and mother, so it's going to go well with you and you're going to live long on the earth. There's an important principle here in teaching our children to honor, to honor parents, to honor elders, to honor those in authority, right? That's a biblical principle that's taught throughout the word of God. And this is something I believe that we really needs to be modeled and taught by example to our boys and to our children. Um, you know, I think about how do you, how do they see us honoring our parents, right? And so like at my age, um, my parents are a good, you know, 25 years older than me and maybe your parents are even more, you know, even much more older than you um, than that. But how do they see me honoring my parents? Do they see me, you know, speaking kindly of them? Do they see me trying to include them, you know, as my children's grandparents into their lives and valuing their contribution? Um, do they see me um, really treating them with respect? Or am I always complaining or grumbling or whatever, right? By contrast, how do they see me honoring my parents? How do they see me honoring those in authority? Am I always complaining about the president, my boss, you know, um, so a certain leader who's speaking on television? Am I always griping and complaining and criticizing those in authority? You know, our, our boys are meant to stand up as leaders in their families, in the communities. They're meant to have influence. And if they see us constantly criticizing those in authority and talking about how ridiculous they are and, you know, all of their ideas are bad, then what kind of message are we sending them about being a leader or about being a parent or a grandparent when we're not showing honor? And so, you know, modeling honor by example, I think is so important. Think about how do they see you treating your spouse? And I would say, you know, for fathers in particular as well, you know, as your son looks at your example of your marriage, right? And the relationship that you have with your wife, they're learning how to treat their future spouse by looking at your example. And so how do they see you speaking about your wife? Is it with honor and respect? Is it, you know, valuing what they have to offer and the ideas and the contributions that they have to make to the family and, you know, whatever's being discussed at the time or the decisions being made? Do they see you modeling honor? And so that's what I would say um, as my number two piece of advice here. And then number three, teach them to be a servant leader. And so the Bible explicitly compares the role of the husband in a marriage to Jesus. So we think about, you know, the marriage relationship, a husband and a wife. Well, you know, as Paul was teaching, again, I'm going to look at Ephesians 5 for this. As Paul was teaching men how to be husbands, he compared them to Jesus and how Jesus cares for us, his bride or the church, right? And so in Ephesians 5.25, um, it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. And so what did he do? His love motivated him to give. Not to take it all for himself, not to demand that you do this for me and that for me and, you know, I'm in charge and so, you know, uh, and not with a harshness. Jesus gave himself for his bride, for the church. And so, you know, really being in a leadership position in a family or even in a business or in a ministry requires a servant attitude. It requires you to really consider others' needs before your own. It's a very selfless position being a leader. 
And so, you know, teaching our boys the role of the servant leader to consider people around them, to consider what's best for them, what's consider, you know, how they need to be spoken to, to help them ex feel loved and appreciated and flourish and grow. Um, you know, in verse 28 and 29 of that chapter, it says, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. And so, you know, being in that leadership position requires us to cherish the people that we're leading. And, you know, I feel like nowadays a lot of men are shying back from the leadership role, whether it comes to, you know, starting businesses or leading their families or whatever it might be. They shy back instead of, you know, stepping into the role that God has called them to do with confidence and with, um, you know, this boldness and this compassion and this love for the people around them, love that, you know, that they need to lead them with, to nourish and to cherish them, to think about what do these people need? I want to get them what they need to grow and to flourish. Hallelujah. You know what? God has a calling for our boys. I, I want you to think about your sons and think about your grandsons right now. Um, and there is something special that God has called them to do. There is really a need for men of God just to step into their role with boldness and with confidence. And, um, and really, as parents, we can, we can mold them. We can, you know, um, inspire them to take that role. And, uh, you know, one part of the verse that we just read before this in Ephesians 6, it talks about, you know, training them and admonishing them in the Lord and not provoking them to wrath, not, you know, being harsh and unreasonable, you know, um, where they, they can't please us because we have all of these rules and regulations and all of this. No, but to let them be secure as we're teaching them and we're guiding them and correcting them and training them, but that they would know that we're going to love them no matter what. We're not a harsh taskmaster that's impossible to please, um, that they have to like attain this some, you know, unattainable um, status. And then we say, oh, finally, I'm proud of you. And finally, you did what I expected of you. No, but to train them in love and give them that security that they need to really flourish in the atmosphere of love, to build that confidence in them. And so, you know, that's what I wanted to touch on today for raising boys. When we talk, think about, you know, giving them verbal affirmation, not being afraid to say, I love you. I'm proud of you. Um, you know, there's nothing more that you need to do to make me pleased with you. I love you right now, just the way you are. And then to, you know, encourage them, teach them by example, to honor people around them in their lives, honor parents, honor authorities, honor spouse and those are in relationship with them. And then to be that servant leader, um, who really gave, you know, Jesus gave himself for us. He put us first. He thought of us first and teaching our boys to take that position of a servant in every, with every person they're leading, with every, you know, leadership role that they step into to consider those around them. Amen. Well, with that, you know, we've been talking about parenting this week. And again, Sunday was the five steps, five keys to raising successful children. Um, Tuesday, we talked about raising fierce women of God. And then today, raising strong men of God. You know, parents, grandparents, you have such an important role that God has called you to in raising these children. And I have to tell you, there's grace to do it right? There is grace. There's equipping that God has for you. You don't have to be perfect. We're not, right? We don't do everything perfectly, but God is able to, you know, guide us as we are helping to mold these children up to step into what God has called them to do. Amen. Have a blessed week.